thank you, Vice Chairman, sir. When uh, a senior parliamentarian and Jairam Ramesh uh, started speaking on this debate, I thought there was possibly a split in the Congress party because his initial observations on, the, on welcoming the tax proposals appeared to be directly in, uh, directly opposite to the contrarian to the views expressed by the deputy leader of opposition, Mr. Anand Sharma, only last week on a discussion on the economy. And, uh, and, and both of them have served, if my memory is right, both of them have served as ministers for commerce in the same UPA government. Mm -hmm. And uh, so towards the end, he began to raise possibly some questions. His initial problem was only with the timing. Why were these announcements made on the eve of uh, the Prime Minister's, Honorable Prime Minister's uh, Howdy Modi event? It was not, he had not gone there for Howdy Modi event. I think to your, uh, po po possibly you have a little problem that wherever he goes, he addresses uh, thousands and thousands and lakhs of Indians overseas. But this was certainly, there was a context to this announcement. The context to this announcement was a lot of economic agenda was on, uh, on the Honorable Prime Minister's itinerary. He was meeting several global investors and global CEOs in Houston, in New York. And also the global context is something I think all of us know about. But I would like to still allude to it. You have seen over the past few months yeah. how <laughs> India today faces, India today looks at the possibility of new investment opportunities in the wake of a global slowdown, in the wake of decisions by many manufacturers, overseas corporates, global corporations to look for an investment destination beyond China. And therefore, it was certainly imperative for us to really make ourselves competitive on, on tax competitive levels with the rest of the competitors, with the rest of the global economy, and particularly many of these Asian countries. Because of this major, I would call this one of the, or possibly the most important uh, tax related announcement in the since independence, because it's a, it's a huge cut at one level. And this was not something to be discussed in a GST council. My understanding was GST council is meant to discuss uh, taxes related to goods and services, not to discuss corporate taxes and personal income taxes. Therefore, I don't think it was really mandatory to discuss it in such a forum. With 15% as the tax rate for the new manufacturing uh, companies, we have certainly brought ourselves on par with the best in the region. We are more attractive than many other countries like uh, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, then uh, Taiwan and many other countries. We are even more attractive than them. So this was to seize an opportunity that is available to India. Because Make in India is a, not just a slogan, it's a dream, and it is something that we shall achieve. And as far as the slowdown in our own economy is concerned, I think all of us know the global, the, the, <clears throat> the global growth rate that was 3.8% only two years ago in 2017 is projected to be 3% this year. So that's a huge decline. So one can see this kind of a decline affecting economies around the world. So we are certainly not facing a, a reverse trend in India. This is certainly in keeping with the global trends. But this is also an opportunity for us to uh, make use of the opportunity to emerge as, the, as a winner. <coughs> If you look at, it's not just in terms of tax. Over the last five years, a series of reforms have been uh, introduced, a series of reforms have been unleashed to make India a favored destination for both the foreign investors and also to make India as the, as the best place to invest even for the domestic uh, investors. On ease of doing business ranking, 
We were at 142 in 2015. You, I think as, as several governments have been in office, but not any government has been able to achieve the kind of a remarkable progress that this country has achieved in five years due to the initiatives of Honorable Prime Minister and his government. From 142 in 2015, in just a matter of four years, we have jumped to the 77th rank. So a, a, a gain of 65 points, 70, 65 points is, is historic. So therefore, it is not the step of lowering the corporate tax is not an isolated step. It's only in a series of path-breaking reforms that have been taken in this country, which is making India a, far, a, a very attractive destination. Look at FDI inflows. From $36 billion five years ago, they have climbed to about $64 billion, a 78% hike in a, in a short span of four, three to, four to five years. A global innovation index, it's important for any economy to be, to be leveraging on inflation to really achieve high growth levels in the long run. On the global innovation index, we have jumped from 81 in 2015 to 52 in 2019, and we certainly hope to reach a 25. Uh, we certainly hope to be among the top 25 in the next few years. And if you look at our overall performance, the opposition has been trying to really paint this entire economy, economic situation in a very, very negative manner. There are attempts to actually to talk down the economy, to create a panic atmosphere in the economy. But I think I would like to uh, draw upon the historic experiences to tell us how this situation is far superior to the time when you were in government. A question was asked and repeatedly being asked, is this a structural decline? Is this a cyclical decline? And mockingly, they now want to ask, is it a seasonal decline? And we know you are great economists with, uh, with great degrees. But we would like to ask them, what was the nature of decline when the UPA2 was in power? From the year 2000, I'd like to give you the figures. From the year 2000, 10, 11, rather, yeah, from 10, 11 till 13, 14, the GDP growth rate declined from 10.3% to 6.6% to 5.5%, and eventually ended at 6.4%. So a, ten, a four to five point decline in GDP, was that a structural decline or was that a seasonal decline? Was that a result of a corruption decline? I think, I think this great economist and who are able to comment on uh, the present situation, if you could really reflect on the past and really analyze the situation, I think that will be a a uh, very good introspection for them, and it will be a learning for others, uh, for us as well. I would like to draw your attention to a, a poverty report of the Brookings Institute. This report was published only a, a, a few weeks ago. This report talks about how India has achieved a huge decline in poverty to not to have the stigma of the country having the largest number of poor people in the country. In 2018, for the first time, we are not the, we are not the country with the stigma of having the highest poor people. Because we have, we have failed. We have failed as governments in the past, but certainly in 2018, in the, under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, India's poor has declined gradually, drastically to to really help us really come off this particular tag of being the country with the fastest, with the largest number of poor people. As this is the sustainable development goal number one, the foremost sustainable development goal for the world, I think India has achieved certainly a huge, a huge gain under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, and this is something for this country to cheer about. And if, uh, if, you are, if, if this kind of uh, arrogance that we know how to fix economy, you guys don't know. 
we are the people who can teach you. I think I know everything, this kind of arrogance, it is inversely proportional to the public support that you get in this country. People expect every political party and leader to show a modicum of modesty. But this arrogance is not backed by performance. Let me give you some more statistics. Let us look at the kind of cost that poor people of this country has paid in successive governments of the opposition. In the last five years, under Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, the average rate of inflation is only about 4%, 4.4%, well below the RBI mandated level of 5%. And in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government, that was, that's another full term of five years Atal ji served as the Prime Minister. The average rate of inflation was, it was below 3%. But let me tell you, the 10 years of the government that preceded our government and the five years, the UPA2, the average rate of inflation was 10.3%. So what are you boasting about? You are claiming to be a great deliverers in terms of growth, but at what cost? And what, was the causes of the, what were the causes of decline from 2010, 11 to 13, 14, which actually the, the effects of which the country is still facing. That was also the period when there was a profligacy of lending money indiscriminately. That was also a period this country had witnessed some of the worst scams in the country. Today they are talking about power sector in difficulty. It, it is in difficulty because of the Colgate scam. Because hundreds of licenses were cancelled because of the considerations of crony capitalism. The telecom sector suffered because of the 2G spectrum scam. Lacks of crores of public money have really, have really gone disappearing. So obviously, so you, you compare with us when you claim to be a greater doctors of economics. And please tell us why was, I can also give you the inflation levels during the 70s, if you look at the 70s, from 80, 81 till 83, 84, the average rate of inflation was 10.75%. From 72, 73 to 76, 77, 12.7%. So you claim to be a party that is there to uh, uh, remove poverty, but you actually, you literally force people into poverty. Who does the CPI inflation, who does the inflation price rise cost the most? It is the poor. So because of your flawed policies, because of your crony capitalism, your pro-industrialist policies, the country, the poor people of this country have paid a huge price and they suffered for decades. And only under Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, they see a ray of hope. Because this government has not only focused on growth, it has indeed focused on, on uh, eradicating poverty and improving the quality of life of the poverty. So therefore, I would like to also, all the time you talk about demonetization. Demonetization has done this, demonetization has done that. We are great experts in economy. Why don't you come and take a lecture from us? I think what kind of a devastation you brought to the economy is evident from the numbers I presented. You have destructed India's poor and their economy, and then you claim to be the great performers or miracle makers. And let me tell you what has, the, what has been the impact of demonetization in this country. It has led to a formalization of economy. It has led to digitization of economy. It has, it has brought money directly into the accounts, into the, into the pockets of the poor. Where, the, where, where, the, where a prime minister said, only one-sixth of the money that we send from Delhi reaches the pockets of the poor for whom it is meant. We are today, we have delivered more than 8.7, we have delivered more than 7.4 lakh crores, rather 7.8 lakh crores. In 2018-19, 7.8 lakh crores of money was directly delivered via the DBT. This has led to a savings of 1.24 lakh crores. So whatever our government has done, 
is in terms of delivering lakhs of crores of money directly into the pockets of the poor, which has helped alleviate them from poverty. But what you have indulged in is, I think, whatever uh, scams I alluded to, they refer to lakhs of crores of uh, uh, Lost lacks of crores of evasion of public money, rather, uh, 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 rather uh, loot of public money. The Beam app, which was which was actually designed in honor of uh, Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar, it's named after him. In 2018-19, 8.71 lakh crores of money was transacted through Beam app. Beam app. These are staggering numbers. The world is taking note of it. The World Bank or all other international organizations are highlighting India as a success story. You have 37 crore Jandhan accounts where this money has been directly deposited. So we have done what the Honorable Prime Minister has done in five years, is to, is to completely transform India's economy and to ensure that every penny of India's money reaches the poor people of this country. It certainly doesn't sound music to the, to the ears of certain interests. They certainly have enjoyed a phone banking facility in the past. There was a lot of facility available where a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, licenses can be issued through personal contracts, personal conversations. This government has ended all such regime. So where only not today, everything allotment is, happens on a on a transparent basis. There is absolutely no room any, for any kind of hera ferry, and this is certainly hurting a lot of interest. So it's time. The people of India have got used to this new system. They've got used to the new digital systems. They've got used to operating uh, Jandhan accounts. They are living in the most honest way. And I would like to urge all those who may have benefited from the earlier systems from, uh, from a lot of this uh, flaws in policy, please be ready, please, be, please, please know how to work in the new India. Because in new India, everyone will have an opportunity to earn money, but it has to be in the most legitimate manner. So with this, uh, Vice Chairman Sir, I would only like to, Jairam Rameshi refer to some Hindi film title. I will refer to a Hindi film song. I think there are some people in the opposition who keep saying all the time, I am the best, I am the best, I am the best. And uh, many party leaders also sing in chorus, you are the best, you are the best. I think you will only be considered best if not by commenting against others, but by showing how you have delivered a better performance in the past, not by making stinging allegations on comments. Thank you, sir. Thank you.